Hi guys, good morning. How are you today? Um, this is number five of the video series. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the other ones. I realized that the first couple were shorter and then the last couple were longer. Sometimes when I'm telling my story, I have to find a cutoff spot and I realize that these are about the length of like a, a TV show. Um, so that may deter people from watching it, but that's their choice. And I hope that it will find an audience because I believe in the end as they go through the journey with me, I think that it will bless people. At least that's my goal. Um, secondly, um, I also wanted to say that, um, sometimes it'll seem that I'm being inconsistent about the ages. Cause I said like, my siblings, some of my siblings are two years apart. Well, they're actually 18 months apart. So sometimes half the year, you know, for a half a year, they're only a year apart. And then like my sister Pauline, when we had the race right, I said she was 12 and I was seven. That's only five years. When I said we were six years apart, well, we're not quite six years apart. So there is a little bit of a time when we are five years apart. And it was during the race right. So she was 12 and I was seven. She hadn't turned 13 yet. Um, with that being said, I'm going to invite the Lord in to what I share with you in the sex next section, because I want to tell you something that right now you may have picked your heroes through my story, you know, um, but, and again, I remember I called it soapbox or stones. Here's where you're going to probably want to get on your soapboxes and throw stones and maybe some of the heroes of the story start to get tarnished and there may be points that you don't even like me in the story um which is fine i deserve that um i make a lot of stupid selfish dumb choices and um like i said i don't excuse sin i understand why people try to understand why people behave the way they do because i know why i behave the way i do but I don't excuse the sin, so I don't expect you to excuse mine. Um, I deserve judgment, um, but I praise God that Jesus came to die on the cross for my sins so that I don't have to face judgment. He faced it for me, um, which allows me the freedom to be um, live in the fullness of Christ and be who it is he's called me to be. And I also want to address there's going to be times where you're gonna wanna judge God's people too, but I want you to understand something. Um, the church is why Christ died, his people, his body. Um, but right now we're flawed and we're fallible and we're figuring it out. But one day we are gonna look perfect. We're gonna look like Jesus and we're gonna be his bride. Um, so even with them, the grace of Jesus falls upon them because there are going to be some parts of my story that I share that you're going to want to judge. You're going to want to judge me. You're going to want to judge the people around me. You're going to want to judge. Um, but just remember, by the grace of God, there's this thing that says, there by the grace of God go I. If it weren't for God's grace, this would be everybody's story. But even, even so, it's my story. But by God's grace, it's a redeemed story. And I hope you guys hang on through the end to find out how it ends. And I'm grateful to God. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this, why I'm exposing myself, number one, out of obedience to the Lord. I feel like God's told me to do this and I need to do it. I was struggling writing it, so I'm videoing it. And... um the odds of people actually watching it, I know are slim to none. The numbers are really small. I mean, if people choose to share it, awesome, great. But I still was obedient, regardless of what those numbers say. I did what I felt God called me to do. And um, to be able to say that in the end, this I'm redeemed. And so are several people who... Um, look pretty unredeemable through the story. But with that being said, I'm going to pray. I say that a lot also through this. With that being said, I don't know. Don't know why I say that. But anyway, I'm going to pray, invite Jesus in, um, 
and ask him to anoint my tongue to be able to say what needs to be said about this next section of my life. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before your throne, Lord, and I just pray that right now you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, that you would anoint me to speak what you want me to speak, that the listeners would hear what you want them to hear. Um, Father, I just thank you and praise you, Father, for your glory, for your grace. Thank you that no matter how stupid I've been in my life, no matter how sinful I am or sinful um, the people are around me, Father, there's hope in Jesus Christ. There's hope because he paid the price for all sin, all sin, all sin. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that my sin can be forgiven by the blood of Jesus. I can't earn it, um, but I can choose to receive it. And I have, and I thank you for that. Bless the listeners and the watchers of these videos. I pray that it would go into the homes that you want for it to go into. I pray, Father, that it it it, it um, gives uh, hope to anybody who listens to it, Lord. I pray that they have um, grace encounters, Father God, and that they have life-changing moments where they just stop and cry out to you because it, this story seems similar to them. So we just commit this to you and we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we left off um, that I was 10 and we were in Pontiac, Michigan, and my mom, we were, we were living in Lee, my mom's boyfriend's house. And we were going to move back to Illinois, back to Love's Park. Um, well, we do, um, and we move into this house on Marquette. And um, North Park, Love's Park, um, has a a little bit of a reputation for housing some hillbillies and stuff like that, which I am, you know, I'm a Detroit hillbilly. Um, and so it didn't, the house was not a bad house. I felt, I felt like it was a decent house in a decent neighborhood. It wasn't the best neighborhood, but it was, it was good enough for what we knew. Um, as, as someone, I love him so much. As someone we know used to say, it's uh, good enough for the girls I hang out with. <laughs> oh, anyway, made me laugh. So at this place, though, um, and just so you know, we still had Fred. Actually, this is where Fred would die. Um, it was really sad. He got, he got, like attacked by an animal he was in a tree or something or a bush and found him frozen in a bush or something I don't know I just remember being sad but we had had him on in Madison Heights we had him in Hazel Park we had him in Pontiac and he made it to Love's Park but here's where he passed away um this here is also where my mom and Lee decided to marry um <laughs> They got married up the street because my Aunt Brenda lived <clears throat> on this same road. And um, you'll hear more about her. Um, yeah. That was a tragic story. But anyway, um, my Aunt Brenda lived down the street. So I said Brenda funny because my friend Brenda... We call her Bren, so I started to call my Aunt Bren. That's not what we called her. We called her Brenda. So anyway, with that being said, my mom and my... And so, by the way, I'm sorry I do that, but that's part of the ADHD squirrel, you know? So it is what it is. Anyway, uh, they get decide to get, <laughs> get married. I, this is a nervous laugh. They decide to get married in their house, okay? Now, remember... <laughs> <laughs> My mom. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, this is going to sound traumatic to you guys. And it was very traumatic at the time. But now looking back, I'm like, oh, my gosh, Mom. I have a thing. Like, when I'm angry, um, some people, when they're angry, they break things. They'll throw things or push things or whatever. I'm a yeller. I'll yell really loud because I want to be heard. But I don't break things. And I don't throw things because that's what my mom used to do in the this is one of the <laughs> one of the times that she did. Okay, you ready? Okay, 
my mom and my stepdad get married, all right? And there's a table, and it's full of, you know, gifts. I like this beautiful, I remember these swans, these beautiful glass-blown swans from somebody. Just beautiful. A lot of glass stuff on there. Why there was so much glass stuff, I don't know. But <laughs> right after they... <laughs> Right after they get married, this is like the reception, whatever, in the house. And my mom was, <laughs> my mom was drinking. She, <laughs> she got in a fight with Lee. She got so mad. She took her arm and she went like this. And every, <laughs> everything that was on that table got knocked off, shattered. She, <laughs> oh my gosh, she busted all of these wedding gifts that people got her at her own reception. Oh my gosh, my mom. Ugh. Anyway, what are you going to do? <laughs> at the time, it was very traumatic, but looking back, I can't even ima imagine what people were thinking. Like, <laughs> they spent money on that, and she broke it. But anyway, that sort of set the tone for their marriage. Like I said, she had already been abusive to him. But um, this house, for the most part, everything was fine until a lot of times. What was cool about this house is my cousins. Um, we had a couple of cousins from a different aunt, from my Aunt Versi. Her, her kids would come over, and we were pretty close with them, pretty tight. And we would have fun they would hang out and stuff like that and spend the night and I also made a friend at school um her name was Chris I made a friend um named Chris at this house and um we were like besties I would go hang out with her her at her house and her mom was a single mom and she was so pretty and I remember eating salads all the time and she was just beautiful and she dated this guy who ended up being our art teacher a year later um and so it was just, I don't know, that I enjoyed. But um, some stuff happened in this house. Um, and like I said, you're going to want to, at this point, you might want to start picking up um, soapbox and stones and or get on a soapbox and don't throw a soapbox. Get on a soapbox or throw stones at some of the people who were heroes prior. Um, this is actually the house where my sister, uh, Pauline, because, like I said, there was a lot of drugs. My sister Pauline introduced pot to my friend Chris and me. She had us try pot for the first time. We were 10. Um, I remember not liking it. Um, I can't speak for Chris. I don't know what happened, what she thought of it. But, yeah. So, that would be the first time one of my siblings would introduce drugs to me. Um, but... Uh, not sure why she did it. And the other thing that happened that was weird in this house, I don't know if you guys remember these games. Now, some people might think they're innocent. They're, I don't believe they're innocent. The Mary, Mary, Bloody Mary or whatever, and you're in the bathroom and it's dark and stuff like that. My sister Pauline played those games with us too. And I absolutely hate them. Hate them, hate them, passionately hate them. Um, I, I really don't think that they're funny. I think it's introducing the demonic into people's lives after hearing my mom's voice change and after, in hindsight, as I grew older, looking back at what happened in that closet, I know it was demonic. There were demons. I could see, look back in my mind's eye and see them swirling around me, teaching me to hate myself. So um, with that, I'll move on. I don't want to get too preachy there or scare people, but it's a reality of my story. Um... Now, my mom and my stepdad continued to fight, of course, and it it got it got pretty bad. And I was now getting to the age where I was trying to protect my mom from herself. Um, it, it sort of became a habit in this place. And one of the times, I remember my sister Judy was there. I think Joanne was there. I think Pauline was there. Um, I don't know if it was close to Christmas or what, but her and Lee got into a fight. And when they got into a fight... Um, Lee had had it. At this point, I think he was probably drunk too. And I remember him, th she was like screaming at him and he threatened to hit her. Like, get away from me, I'm going to hit you. And I remember I, some, I came running out of the bedroom and he had his fist drawn back because he was going to punch my mom. 
and I like ran up and grabbed his arm, grabbed his arm because it was like his left arm and he had it and he was going to punch her and I ran up and I grabbed his arm to stop him from hitting her and he instinctively came with his right arm and me right in the face, just punched me right in the face. And I like grabbed my face, started sobbing and ran into the bedroom. And I don't even know that anybody came to check on me. Um, they may have, but I don't recall whether or not they did. Um, I just remember it hurt. Um, now I know that makes Lee sound like a terrible human being, but he wasn't. My mom was so abusive to him. It was just instinctive. I had grabbed his arm and he was in full swing and it was just an instinct. And I don't believe that he wanted to hurt me. I just don't. Um, I know Lee and I've known him for a long time and I just don't think that he meant to hurt me. He did hurt me, but I don't think he meant to. And so I remember that with that house. Um, it's funny because it's weird, but I remember ordering pizza at this house because that was kind of a treat um, for us to be able to get pizza. And I remember being able to get pizza, which I thought was kind of cool, um, getting pizza ordered. But um, remember when I told you that it starts to get, I'll start to get sort of blurry and it starts to, this is called what I call rapid moving. And I'm pretty sure the order, but I'm not necessarily, can't guarantee the order. Um, when I had started school, I remember how I met Chris. Why she's so special to me is because when I had started school, I, I remember being full of angst and stuff like that. But she, she actually made a point to talk to me. She made an absolute point um, to be my friend. And we stay, we were fast friends and we, and we stayed pretty close through fifth grade. Um, but I moved from, we moved from Marquette, we moved over into a house on Superior. And on Superior, like these are all in Love's Park, they're just sort of, on Superior, um, I remember my mom, she drank a lot, of course, and when, whenever we would get, to, uh, have a, excuse me, a get together, she always got intoxicated and I felt like whenever we got in a group with our family, it was always her drinking and her violent behavior that would just turn it sour. Um, but um, at this time, I think we started to go camping and different things like that. So that was kind of fun. And then um, as we... Uh, Lee still was trying to have his construction company and I remember we had a little pink pad and people would call and we would take messages and I remember thinking that was really cool and what's funny is I remember um I remember in this house um that I went this was cool I Lee had given me twenty dollars and I got to go on a trip to see Chris because it was summertime and she had gone to see her family in Iowa and I got to go with her mom, Char, and we got to drive to Iowa and I got to go to Devil's Lake and um, which is in Wisconsin, but we got to, I got to go to Clinton and um, different things like that. And I just remember it being really cool, but I also remember losing my money, but um, I remember I loved it. It was like normal and fun. And <clears throat> so I just, that was an awesome trip. Well, here we start to bounce around um, from here. We go from on Superior, we um, end up on North 2nd in this little house. And my sister Judy had come and moved in. And my brother Norm actually moved up from um, Detroit. By the way, the house on Superior, I remember Elvis dying at that house. He died. I remember him dying. Um, and I remember it was just like devastating to me because we got the paper and it was colored and it was never colored, but I loved Elvis. But anyway, uh, we moved to this house on North 2nd and our sister Judy had moved back and, um, my sister, or my brother Norm had moved up from Detroit. He had finally come up. And so obviously this was 1977 my sister Judy had moved and um, her and my sister Joanne ended up getting this trailer. 
and I remember going over there and visiting her and she was going to take us, um, we're still on, I believe we are still on, uh, the house on North second. My, uh, sister was going to take us to see to the like animal petting zoo thing and which is a rare treat for us. So the three of us got to, we were getting ready to go and we get to a stop sign but she realizes she needs gas and she backs up and well, she hits a motorcycle behind us. And the guy gets out and instead of being mad at her because she was so pretty, I don't know, he ended up dating her, going out with her or something. It's ridiculous. But anyway, she took us back to her house and we got to have this little picnic because it had started raining at this point and she had like this awning thing and we had this little picnic there. It was It was kind of cold but cool and I thought, you know, Mrs. Fisher's potato chips. And it, it was really thoughtful of her to do that because we were all really looking forward to that. I remember that about this time. And <clears throat> my, my brother Norm had started dating this girl. Um, and um, when we had moved from, he had started dating this girl, but then split up with her and was dating another girl. And I remember this is what little kids will do, which isn't right. And I remember his old girlfriend coming. It was, I think her name was Debbie or something. Um, because he had broke up with Glow, obviously, because she stayed in Detroit. But Debbie, he had dated her for a while. And then she came to visit. And she was, um, he was now dating a new girl who I must have, who ended up being his wife. But I, I must have chose her over Debbie because I remember Debbie coming and it irritated me that she was there. I was irritated enough at 10 years old that I had, I don't know, some kind of marshmallow something. I don't know, it was some kind of holiday or whatever. And we were standing outside and she was standing and she went to sit down and I slid my plate under her so that she sat in it. And I remember her standing up and wiping it off and she had like this green velour jumpsuit on or something and I don't know why I did that um but I was irritated that she was there because I felt like I just didn't like what she was doing with Bobby and Norm I don't, honestly don't know what my 10 year old mind was thinking but I did that and I own I feel bad because later I would meet up with her as an adult and she's a lovely woman and I had no reason whatsoever to be to do that but I was 10 and stupid and so, but with that, those are the memories I kind of have there. We moved, again, Joanne and Judy ended up moving into this trailer. But from there, because these houses, we didn't stay in very long. From there, we moved to a house on, <clears throat> on uh, Riverside. And this house on Riverside, at this point now, I'm 11. Because we had gone from Superior to this house on North 2nd. Now we were on... Um, this house on Riverside. And this house on Riverside was tiny, tiny. Um, it, it had three bedrooms, but it was super tiny. The bedrooms were really tiny. Uh, but my brother was living with us, and I remember, you know, his girlfriend at the time, eventually future wife, would come and stay the night, too. I also remember my cousins would come and stay the night. Um... Well, my mom, Lee was there, and my mom, the drinking got pretty bad. And I remember the the water here, this is weird, but the water here was undrinkable. It was like well water, and it just rusted. Remember that smell I told you that I smelled at Dorothy and Ethel's? I feel like this house had, or at Ethel's and Dottie's, um, I feel like this house had that kind of smell, that weird sort of rust smell. But um, my mom's drinking got progressively worse and there were times where Lee would move would be there and then he would leave and be there and leave well this is one of the times that he was there but it would create him leaving um my mom and stuff used to go to the racetrack she loved to she started to gamble they would go to the racetrack um like horse track racetrack like horse betting um she started playing a lot of bingo 
Um, she actually would take us to the Speedway, which was kind of fun. I like that. But always, always, always getting wasted. Always. And I remember hating that. And she would often drink and drive. So that's why, like, whether we went camping, she would get drunk. If we went to the Rockford Speedway, which was rare, but she would get drunk. Um, and it just, we would get together with family and she would get drunk. And it would turn into a fight with Lee and or with somebody else, um, usually one of her kids or Lee. And it was awful. I hated it. Well, um, Lee had was here still at the time. And again, she had gotten drunk and they get in a fight. And this time, like my cousins are over and we're hiding in the bedroom. And this was one of the first times that I, I, I remember being really scared of the fight, of what was happening out there. I was too afraid to go out and try to stop it, but I knew like we had to do something. And I think I, this was one of the first times I actually started praying to God because I was scared. And the reason I was scared is because I could hear my stepdad yelling, she's got a knife, she's got a knife, she's got a knife. And he's yelling it. Well, we can hear, because the house was small, the living room, and then there's a hallway, there's a bedroom here. My brother's bedroom was at the end of the hallway. I can hear them coming down the hallway, because Lee, I think, at this point, is backing up, trying to get away from her. And um, I open the door. I instinctively go to the trouble, I open the door, and as I open the door, I watch and I see a knife come down. And the knife comes down and lands in his chest. And she pulls the knife back up because she's gonna go at him again. Well, I grab the knife from her. I grab the knife. And at that point, I don't know if I scream Norm, I don't know what happened, but my brother comes running out the door. And I like take the knife, go in the bedroom, and I hide the knife. My brother comes down this narrow hallway. He makes it past Lee, grabs my mom. And I'm screaming like, you know, call an ambulance. And he's, um, he just takes her and slams her in the kitchen. Somehow or another, they made it to the kitchen because I went in and hid, hid, the knife, but then I came back out and they somehow or another tussle into the kitchen and he grabs her and slams her up against the wall and he's like, what have you done? What have you done? And meantime, Lee is in the living room and he has this blue and white tie-dyed shirt and he's holding his hand right here and I can just see blood coming out. And I'm like screaming, call an ambulance! And... So they do, eventually my brother sort of, my mom instantly sobers up and my brother sort of comes to when one of them calls an ambulance. And the ambulance, it was winter time, so the ambulance couldn't make it up. It was enough of a hill, the ambulance couldn't make it up. It had to park on Riverside, which is a four lane, it's two each way. So they had to park there to get Lee out. And I remember them, um, wanting to see if Lee wanted to press charges and Lee said no and he did at that time back then I guess you had a choice I don't know how my mom got away with it I don't know if it's because we were in the bedroom beg and I'm on my knees and I'm praying begging God to stop it what's happening and not let Lee die also part of it might be this they were looking for the knife and I hit it and I never told them I had the knife because they're like, where's the knife? Where's the knife? Because that would have been their evidence. Well, I never told them I took it. And so for whatever reason, by God's grace and mercy, she did not get charged. Um, and Lee came back and forgave her. Um, I don't know if he moved out shortly after that. I feel like that's when he left because there were times where he came and went and came and went. And I think he left because seriously... The woman stabbed him. She had already cut off his ear and now she stabbed him. And um, so he leaves. I think he went back to Detroit at this point. Um, but he leaves. And then, remember that guy I told you um, that I didn't like very much? 
um, he came around and he was just such a jerk. I he was a bully and he was, I feel like he was aggressive and abusive and like, oh, I just controlling. I didn't like him. I just didn't. Well, he came to visit and, um, we ended up going to Detroit with him. Why? I don't know. And I think he was driving my mom's vehicle and that's when she put the mattress in the back of her um, car or truck and we drove to Michigan. And we were there. I don't know if it was for a visit or why we were there, but we were around this guy and he was just, uh, I just didn't like him. And one of the things I remember, like when we came to a railroad track, these things come down and he ended up going through it as the train was coming. And I remember, I just felt like he was always endangering us. And like my mom, my mom was such a drinker at this point. Like I remember back in Detroit, and I may have already said this, like I remember driving and a cop pulls us over and she was so drunk that he should have arrested her, but because he saw his kids in the back seat, he did it and he let her go. And there was just that all the time. So whenever we were traveling anywhere, there was booze was always involved on, on some level, booze or drugs. And I just hated it. And now I don't like to travel. I don't like to travel. I get severe anxiety whenever we travel. And you'll find out why, because it actually gets worse. Um, it gets worse. So, um, with that being said, this is also the place. Remember I told you back when my mom, like, sort of lost it on me in the house on Gray? She did it again here. And at this point, I'm 11 years old, and we had a hide-a-bed, and I was sleeping in the hide-a-bed in the living room. And when I say this house was small, it was, it was super small. Each room was small. Um, so, the hide-a-bed sort of filled up the living room when it was open but I was laying in there and in the middle of the night my mom came in and I don't know if she came in from a night of drinking I don't know if she was drinking at home her drink of choice was whiskey she always drank whiskey to this day I cannot stand whiskey can't stand the smell of it I have I have whiskey in my house because my guest will drink it but I hate whiskey hate it with a passion I don't know that I've ever if I've had a sip of whiskey, I can count how many times. Like, that's how much I hate it. If I've had any at all, I hate whiskey. Did I mention that I hate whiskey? Anyway, this particular night, um, I'm asleep, and my mom comes in, and I don't know why, but instinctively, she starts wailing on me again. And again, it's this demonic voice that I hear. And she's just beating, and I mean beating me with her fist, punching me full out. And I'm screaming, Mom, 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 it's me, Melinda. Stop, it's me, Melinda. And for some reason, me screaming that, she hears my voice. She comes back to when she stops. Now, why she did it, I, don't, I really don't know. I have no idea why she did that. I just don't, I still, to this day, I don't get. Like, it's like she goes out of her mind. And it was an attack on me personally. But um, anyway, uh, I remember during this time to hear um, my little sister, we had some kind of fundraiser because someone in her class had leukemia and we had a fundraiser at the fire department. And I remember that. I also remember that my sister had a friend, my little sister had a friend across the street. And remember I said it was a four lane. Um, well, at some point that girl gets hit by a car and dies, actually. Um, she gets hit by a car and dies. So, yeah, I remember that. Um, but from there, you know what? Um, we moved to this um, new house. Uh, from this house um, where Lee got stabbed. And we lived in this house for two years and it's one of my favorite houses. And a lot of stuff happens in this house. So I'm actually going to stop here. I'm going to make this one a short one. I'm going to stop here because from, from the age of 11 on up, things get much more volatile. It's just jam-packed full of stuff. 
So I'm going to sort of stop here with this house on Riverside. And I'm going to try and keep these shorter. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a short chapter. And then the next one will probably be a long one. Um, and with that being said, I will see you later. Melinda out.